Hi, today we're going to take C notes about classic confession. Have a good time. I hope you do your work today. And you, when you're doing it, you need to have your mouth zipped and locked. <laughs> My mom is going to buy some extra zippers and put them on your mouth and lock. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So we're going to try this again since yesterday's video didn't work. So we're going to be taking some C notes on the classification of living things. So remember that classification means grouping things based on their similarities. So kind of like we did in class the other day. If I asked you to group these, what would you go with first? Well, the broadest category would be their shape because if you're a square you're not an octagon if you're a pentagon you're not a rectangle and then if I asked you to classify it like even more detail so you could say first you would go off by their shape put all the squares together all the pentagons together then you could go even further by their color the red the yellow the green so classification is just grouping things based off their similarities Another word for classification in science is called taxonomy. So taxonomy is the science of classifying living things. So make sure you write that definition in your notes. So let's look at all these pictures of animals. Which of these animals is least similar to the others? You have a tiger, wolf, earthworm, lizard, dog, and alligator. Well, if you kind of go through, see what have uh, similar characteristics. For example, they're all animals, so that can't be it. And almost all of them, except one, has four legs. And that kind of leads you to the earthworm. The earthworm is the least similar to all the others. Even though earthworms are considered animals, they also, they cannot, they do not have any legs and they also don't have a backbone or a spine like all the others do. And we call this an invertebrate. In the beginning, the ver people used to always try to classify things. And one of the first person to um, classify was a Greek philosopher named Aristotle. However, Aristotle only grouped things into four categories. He either believed that all life, you were either a plant or an animal. That was it. Nothing in between. And if you were an animal, you were then grouped by how you moved. Animals that swim, animals that fly, and animals that walk. So what was the problem with what Aristotle did? Well, the problem was is he didn't base his system off an organism's structure. He just based it off of what he saw and how they moved. Then came Linnaeus. Around the 1700s, Linnaeus started to change the way that we classified living things. He is called the father of taxonomy. Linnaeus developed a seven-layer grouping system. The most general uh, level is called kingdoms, which we're going to be learning about. And the most specific is all the way to a species. So let's look at this picture. You can see that at the top we have the kingdom animalia, animals, from a grizzly bear all the way to a starfish are all animals. Then as you go farther down in the classification, we get a lot more specific. Animals with only backbones, take out the starfish. Animals that are mammals, which means they produce milk and have hair, take out the snake. Animals that only eat um, meat. Animals that are bears. And then truly a panda bear isn't a real bear because it does um, take in other types of food. And then it goes all the way to a grizzly bear. The closer you get to the species, the more similar the organism should be. So a starfish compared to a grizzly bear is nothing similar except that they're animals compared to a black bear and a grizzly bear. Right there. The seven layers of classification um, of living things go like this. and you'll, you'll get to where you can say it really fast. Kingdom, phylum, class, order family, genus, and then species being the most specific. So again, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. King Philip's cat ordered five grape sodas. Or King Philip came over for green soup. Whatever acronym you can think of to help you remember. So a kingdom is the most general level of classification, and all living things are grouped into six kingdoms. And these are what we're going to learn about. Animalia, 
all the animals, planty, plants, fungi, fungus, protista, which many of you probably don't know, eubacteria, and archaeobacteria. Archaeobacteria should be pretty self-explanatory because we talked about that with prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So let's bring that characteristic in. We already know that prokaryotic means that those cells do not have a nucleus and they're very simple and small, where eukaryotic means they do have a nucleus and they're more complex. So kingdom animalia, prokaryotic or eukaryotic? Plant, prokaryotic or eukaryotic? Fungi? prokaryotic or eukaryotic? And then now you should have answered that all of these are eukaryotic because they all belong to the domain eukarya. Now we go to eubacteria, which belongs to the domain bacteria because even though eubacteria and archaeobacteria are both prokaryotic cells, giving them their domain, archaeobacteria goes a little bit more specialized into the fact that they are bacteria that live in extreme conditions. So we've already kind of started the classification process, but we're just going to go a little bit deeper into the kingdoms. So that's it. That's where our notes are going to stop today. Make sure that you pause the video rewind if you need to go back over anything. All right, and I'll see you tomorrow.